big part of blues rhythm is those really cool fills. And you might be thinking it's all scales, but a lot of it is actually just moving chord shapes around the fretboard. So today we're going to take a look at how to do just that. Printable tabs by becoming a Patreon. Blues challenges, check them out. New ukulele Wednesday and Saturdays. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. Printable tabs in the comment of the comment section. Email in the description. All right, let's do it. Grab your ukulele brain attention span. Follow me on in and let's get bluesy. So let's say you're playing a blues in A. Really quick. The first four measures would be A7, two, three, four. Then you have two of D7. These are measures five and six. Back to A7, or seven and eight. Nine is E7, 10 is D7, 11 is A7, and then 12 is E7. And let's say that you want to give this a little bit of movement, a little bit of flair, add some fills, but maybe it's a little uncomfortable playing the scales and such still. So you want to jump into kind of some easier ways to make some cool articulate fills you know are going to sound good, kind of take some of the guesswork out of it a little bit. One of the cool and easy ways to do that is with chord shapes. What do I mean? Well, you got E7, or you got A7. You also have, if you make a G7 and move it up two frets, another A7. A7, A7. And within this A7, you have all chord tones, meaning all the notes here are also in this chord here. So if you're strumming and singing, teach me now how to play the blues. Teach me now how to play the blues. You can use this shape to create fills. Now the best fills usually work, the blues is divided into four, and the best riffs and fills usually are the back end of those four. So the first four measures, one, two, three, four, you usually sing over one and two. This is where you sing, Right here too, and then you shred here, keep on shredding, shredding, shredding until you get to the D, boom. So it's those measures three and four where this stuff really comes in handy. So one way to do that, slide, double stop, three and two to four and three. So we're gonna go one and two and three, four polar, one and two and three, four polar. And what we're gonna do is get this cool rhythm, one and two and three, all eighth notes. Then we're gonna add a triplet. If you wanted to, you could just, you know, continue with the eighth notes, but we're gonna go one and two and three, four polar. Get a ring finger down here, four, three, four, same rhythm. Okay, Enjoy. something that's gonna sound like this. Into that D. Maybe that triplet at the end would be too hard for the change, but you can do any rhythms you want. And feel free to slide into it from a half step down. Okay, now, this is one A7, this is another A7, this is another A7, which is six, seven, five, seven. This can be a tricky chord, so let's just use these two notes. Again, it's any rhythm you want. Tripola, 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 tripola. One, two, three, four, one, and two. Or individual strings at a time. And you can mix them. Another cool thing about that, the way you slide into it, you can feel free to take it down a half step, give it some dissonance, and then come right back into it. So we're gonna go one polar, two, and three 
and four. One, two, three, four. Boom, another easy spot to throw any rhythmic fill you want in at any time over that A7. So we got A7, A7, A7. They're really all over. Now there's one more. If you bar ninth fret, middle finger here on the 10. Again, a little tricky. But you can also just play 10 and 9. Same rhythm concepts too, right? All these rhythms are going to work over each of these ideas. You just kind of use them how you want. So if we look at each one of these, we can see There's a lot of overlap in what we're able to do with them, and they all serve the same purpose. They're all filling in this hole of time that we have in between lyrics over measures three and four, seven and eight. Now, you're usually singing over this D7, but you do have D7s in other places as well. For example, you got this classic bar shape, but you can also bar the fifth fret and get your middle finger on the sixth fret of the C. You may use that for singing as well, something like, even here, we're gonna sing again. So that's another thing to keep in mind, is you can keep the motion going over the D7, but these are primarily different ways for you to look at this one chord, the A7, which is A, C sharp, E, and G. And how to find that in different places on the fretboard and use that for your rhythm. This also works mid soloing too. So you can mix these ideas with elaborate solo ideas, but the best way to do it is just to Find these shapes, commit them to memory, and then start to use just pieces of them. And experiment with the rhythm as well too, because by experimenting with the rhythm, you're gonna get some other really cool ideas. And there you have it, folks. That is how you rock and roll with using chord shapes to create really cool blues fills. Until next time, take care. And there you have it, folks. That is how you use these chord shapes to create some really cool blues, fills, rhythm, and create some dynamics. Got some cool stuff going on. Keep on rocking and rolling. Enjoy the blues in general. Go through some of those old lessons that we've done. I hope you dig them. And until next time, I hope you have a lovely day. Keep on rocking and rolling. Life is good. Until next time, my friends, take care.